Hey Ruby family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris and welcome back to the Metal Tempest. And in this video I'm going to be covering the new Xandria record entitled The Wonders Still Awaiting. And what a poetic title that is. So let me level with you, Ruby family. When it comes to power metal and symphonic metal, I am a very picky eater. Maybe it's the campiness, maybe it's the overzealous performances, maybe it's the overly theatrical performances, maybe it's the fact that none of these bands know how to make an album that isn't just three fucking hours worth of the same material. Maybe it's because half of them sound the same. Maybe it's because they all just borrow their influences from the popular Finnish and Scandinavian bands. Maybe it's because everyone wants to be a Nightwish ripoff. Maybe it's because every power metal band wants to be Dragon Force. Maybe it's because they sap the life out of their production. Maybe it's because everything just sounds unorganic. Maybe it's because they have the most predictable songwriting known to man. You could chalk it up to anything, but generally speaking, symphonic and power metal isn't my forte. But every once in a while there is a release that piques my interest for one reason or another and makes me check it out. And Xandria is a name that has existed on the tip of my tongue for quite a while. This German symphonic band has pretty much been around for quite some time. And the one thing that has been the hallmark of this band is a tumultuous lineup. And God, they drop these band members like fucking Mountain Dew flavors at this point. And on this new record here, they have four out of the five band members completely new, coming from 2022. So The Wonder Still Awaiting is an apt title, not only for the band from a poetic standpoint, but from a literal standpoint, because everything is new. So when I went into this record, I also wanted to sample some of their older material just to sort of refresh my memory, because they're not a band I go out of my way to listen to much. And one thing that I did enjoy from past Xandria material, specifically like the, the Diane era of Xandria, is the operatic vocals that she would employ and the gothic tinges that they would put into their sound. I think a lot of times these symphonic metal bands go for just the symphonic elements, so to hear something else brought into the fold not only breaks up the monotony, but makes the material stronger and more refined and more listenable. Especially when you have long run times, you can't just pad that out with the same sound. And honestly, if you aren't a big fan of symphonic metal and power metal like I am, I really think you might want to give this record a listen. I do think it has some shortcomings compared to the older era of Xandria, which I will go into in a moment, but I want to talk about the positives first. I actually like the production. For once, the progressive isms and the shimmering production is something that I appreciate. Everything is lively in the mix and it doesn't sound too unorganic. From the instrumental department, even though it's nothing to write home about for power metal and symphonic metal standards, I think that the thrash metal influence on this album, as well as how well thought out and well paced the guitar work across this record is and how they seamlessly transition from both these frantic soaring choruses and also these lower sections with more beauty, more keyboard work, with the guitar being able to match that tone pretty perfectly, I don't think that there were many moments across this record, even if it was a little basic at times, that I just thought that there was some sort of clash between the influences or clash between the softer and heavier moments. Ombre, the new vocalist, fits this band like a glove. She can really employ every single range and dynamic that this band needs to succeed, and she just matches the energy perfectly. She pretty much pulls it off without a hitch, being able to alternate between these seldomly used used operatic vocals, these soaring choruses where her voice just is angelic over the mix, and also some more jazzier moments as well as growls. She really has a great amount of range across this record, and I have nothing but positives to say about it. The only thing that I can say that is a shortcoming for this record is I wish we could have gotten more of her operatic range. She employs it very scarcely, and I can understand why you would want to only use it occasionally because you don't want it to dominate an album, you don't want it to dominate a track, but the standout moments that sort of stick out in my mind from a lot of these tracks are these angelic operatic moments because her range is gorgeous. That sort of overlaps with my major issue with this record, and that is I think they have lost some of their influences and dynamics over time compared to their early material. I don't want to play a competition game because I don't like judging a band solely off of their past material, especially past instrumentalist or past vocalist. But one thing that separates Diane from Ombre is Diane really did employ more of those operatic vocals and she allowed her voice to soar in that way, whereas most of this record Ombre kind of sticks to her middle range sort of tone, which she does have a beautiful mid range and high range, but 
the early material had a lot more dynamics vocally. And that leads me into the instrumentation. I think that on this record, unfortunately, one of my favorite parts of early Xandria is gone, and that is the gothic-isms. If you go back to early Xandria material, if you're unfamiliar with it, there were a lot of gothic influences. And when you have a record that is so long, and a band that is long-winded, and already at risk of sounding overly cumbersome, it is important to have something that sets it apart. And one thing for me that I did appreciate, even if I didn't consume a lot of Xandria's material in the past, is I loved those gothic influences, both in the vocals and the instrumentals, where they would lace in some of these more intermission bits, which were more macabre and atmospheric and creepy and eerie. Pretty much that is overcompensated here, the lack thereof, with constant high energy. Now that's not to say there aren't a lot of interludes and sort of breakup periods in these tracks where it does get slower, where it does get more angelic and heavenly and more piano led, the guitars slow down, it breaks up the composition, becomes more expansive. Obviously that is still prevalent here, but I was really missing the eerie and creepy intermittent bits that were present on past Andrew material. And honestly, I did get fatigued on this record. I think that is one thing that doesn't work in its favor. This album can get a little much to listen to. It's like bubblegum of just chewing the flavor out of it, and by the midway point, there's very little flavor left because they've already shown you all of their tricks. Most of these tracks read like Symphonic Metal 101, and sadly, and I can already see the comparisons coming in, it's just, it, it sounds like Nightwish. It's rudimentary power metal and symphonic metal riffs and solos. The songwriting itself can be very predictable, and even if it's backed by a good mix and a good composition and, generally speaking, very well-performed instrumentals and a good vocalist with a lot of dynamics and range, it still doesn't save this record for being well over an hour's worth of material where they play out their tricks in the first 30 minutes and pretty much just recycle said ideas throughout the entire runtime. And if you're not into symphonic metal or power metal, you are going to get not only bored, but mind-numbingly complacent in listening to this record. It just wears itself too thin too quickly. And I don't know if that's just because the chemistry of the band coming together isn't working quite as refined as it could be, but I just am not a big fan of how this runtime works against this record. Overall, if you enjoy symphonic metal and power metal and you're a fan of bands like Nightwish, I think you should give this record a listen. And if you want a good symphonic power metal recommendation, this would be a good record because I haven't really heard anything in recent memory that has impressed me as much as this record. But with that being said, it does have a lot of shortcomings and it can get very cumbersome to listen to on repeated listens and just as a listening experience, I think they could have trimmed the fat a little bit and I don't think the chemistry is there to really back it because some of their influences that have faded through the sands of time are something I'm missing a lot. And I can see a lot of improvement in the future for this band if they can keep their lineup. For me though, I'm going to be giving this album a 5 out of 10. And that is a wrap. Have you heard this new Xandria record, The Wonder Still Awaiting? If you have, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. I can't wait to discuss this record with you. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today and smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You know who it is. My name is Jay Morris and I'm signing off saying care. Bye.